The word pneumonia refers to inflammation of the lung parenchyma, mainly alveoli and interstitium. Most times, such inflammation is caused by microscopic pathogens, or microbes, as they're sometimes called. These pathogens include bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi. However, inflammation, although very rare, can also be caused by non-infectious agents, such as inhalations of toxic fumes, or even by aspiration of gastric juices. Since pneumonia is frequently caused by infective agents, it is often described as an infection and inflammation of lungs, rather than just inflammation, which may not be the correct definition for many scholars. We will only discuss pneumonia caused by infective microbes. The word infection refers to invasion, multiplication, and colonization of the pathogens. The word pathogen is used for disease-causing microorganisms. The inflammatory response caused by the pathogenic activity of these microbes is responsible for the typical symptoms of pneumonia, which include cough, fever, sweating, chills, shortness of breath, rapid shallow breathing, and sharp or stabbing chest pain that gets worse with deep inspiration or with coughing. Since pneumonia can be caused by many different pathogens with slightly different pathophysiology, requiring different treatment too, the term pneumonia is considered as an umbrella term for conditions that produce similar pathology. Pathophysiology One of the major roles of the lungs is to enable gas exchange, that is, to provide oxygen to the blood and to remove carbon dioxide from the blood. The lower respiratory tract is composed of branching airways that start from the trachea and terminate in alveoli. Alveoli are an important part of the respiratory system, and this is where the gas exchange takes place. These tiny balloon-shaped air sacs are located at the very end of the tracheobronchial tree and are arranged in clusters throughout the lungs, which are commonly known as alveolar sacs. Alveolar sacs resemble bunches of grapes. Alveoli are surrounded by pulmonary capillaries. The gas exchange occurs between alveoli and the pulmonary capillaries at what is known as alveolar capillary membrane. Alveolar capillary membrane is formed by the type 1 pneumocytes, the cells that are the structural components of alveoli and the endothelial cells of the capillaries, and the basement membrane between the two cells. Under normal conditions, the alveolar capillary membrane prevents blood from entering the alveoli and is only permeable to molecular oxygen, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and some other gases. The lung interstitium, as described earlier, refers to alveolar epithelium, capillary endothelium, basement membrane, and perivascular and perilymphatic tissues. For effective gas exchange to occur, alveoli must be ventilated and capillaries must be well perfused with blood. Since airways and alveoli have direct connection to the outside world, many pathogens can make their way deep into the respiratory system. Usually, a robust defense mechanism is enough to fight off these microbes. While there are mechanical defense mechanisms in place, such as the coughing reflex, nasal passages, the glottis, and the mucociliary transport system, which mechanically trap and remove many pathogens, as well as dust particles, alveolar macrophages are the primary phagocytes within the alveoli. Macrophages are specialized cells that are responsible for detecting and clearing the air spaces of infectious, toxic, or allergic particles that bypass the mechanical defenses of the respiratory tract. They do it by a process called phagocytosis, which involves detection, ingestion, and destruction of the harmful organisms and foreign particles. However, there are times when pathogens manage to overcome the defense mechanisms or outnumber the macrophages, and start colonizing within the alveoli and terminal bronchioles. Some of these pathogens may release toxins within the alveoli, and can cause damage to the alveolar epithelium. Macrophages sense the danger and release molecules known as cytokines that activate and invite other white blood cells such as neutrophils to the site of infection. The result is a complex cascade of inflammatory process. Neutrophils are quickly recruited to the site of infection to fight off the offending microbes. Neutrophils pass through the alveolar capillary membrane to enter the alveoli and air spaces. The alveolar capillary membrane becomes permeable for larger molecules and cells. 
The alveoli start getting filled with plasma proteins to start with, which also carry fluid with them, and, in case of damage to the endothelium of the capillaries, even blood can enter into the alveoli. This inflammatory response results in edema formation, accumulation of fluid, pus and blood within the alveoli and air spaces. The patient now has the famous condition, pneumonia. Pus is mainly composed of dead neutrophils. The body's temperature is raised, so fever, cough, and lethargy are the common symptoms. Since many alveoli at this stage are filled with fluid, pus, or even blood, rather than air, the gas exchange does not remain possible. In severe cases, it causes hypoxemia, which means low concentration of oxygen in the blood. If not treated, the condition can cause death. 